What's up, creepers and geekers, Chris, Steve, Charlie Creep. How is everyone doing today? And this box houses a piece to a puzzle I've been wanting to, to kind of put together for such a long time, in fact. Um, the only thing I've done is open it and remove the sensitive information here. So what we have here is a power supply for my Atari 800 8-bit computer. Yay! Now, I still need a couple of things for this. But with everything that we have here, hopefully, if this works, we'll be able to at least play the few games that I have. And we'll actually start to get to enjoy Atari 8-bit line of computers. Something I've wanted to do for a long time. I had an XEGS years ago. And somewhere, somehow, between picking it up and bringing it home, I lost the power supply. And I just never got my hands on one, and I never got to enjoy it. So this is my Atari 800. 8-bit computer, my first one ever, not counting uh, the XEGS that I did have and was unable to ever truly play it. Um, I think it's an incredibly gorgeous looking system. It totally screams of the time period between the colors of everything going around to the font and the way things are presented. This screams late 70s, very, very early 80s. Lifting this flap here, now it should be spring-loaded, but my spring has gone a seed over time. Um, hopefully we will get to fix that here pretty soon. And you're gonna notice another common issue with these I see in almost every one that I've, I've picked up. That right there. <laughs> this is like a shielding thing that's supposed to be attached up here on the lid. Um, but what we'll do is we're gonna give this a good cleaning and I'm gonna find some other kind of really good contact. I might even just do Velcro and just put it up there. Um, that way we will have some good shielding. Not that I think it's technically necessary, but if you look inside here, there's all kinds of black dust now that I have to suck out. I was gonna just blow it out, but I'd rather use the vacuum and get that stuff out of there because there is some in the cartridge ports, which leads me to my next point. You'll notice that there are two cartridge ports, a left and a right one, okay? And every cartridge that you will pick up on the thing will say left cartridge port. The left side was made for programs, be it basic or a game cartridge. And this side, from what I understand, there was going to be a version of these cartridges where you could actually record data to, much like you would on, say, a floppy drive and or, you know, like a, a cassette tape player. And you're gonna use that to save programs. Um, maybe it was to expand a little bit of memory. Uh, again, I don't know too much about that kind of thing but i do know the very basics of why there are two cartridge ports here and they had to make it very clear if you want to play your gorf cartridge you gotta put it here on the left side and these little things forward here towards you and lifting this whole thing up just right will reveal more spots for stuffs and i love it when you can find more stuffs to put in things so given that this is the space for your memory, you could have gotten two different kinds of cartridges, I'm gonna call these. Um, eight or 16K, and of course, if you bought them all 16, you would max this thing out to as far as it could go. And you even have a key here on the back of each one of these cartridges, um, telling you how much K total RAM that you would have and the different configurations, if that'll focus. Um, and in this case, I literally just have one 16K RAM and I have my 10K of ROM, which is the actual operating system for the Atari 800. Um, I was actually kind of saddened to see that I only had the 116K, but that's fine. Uh, I don't know how obscure or hard these would be to find, but I'm hoping to find two more 16 and maxing this bad boy out. So here we have my humble collection of six cartridges, and I do obviously plan on expanding my, my library. We don't call this a collection, it's an 8-bit computer system it's a little more suave than that i do plan on expanding the library of my 8-bit computer cartridges but let's have a look at the titles i already have midnight magic this is a game i absolutely love on the atari 2600 and much like willie of arcade usa i'm a huge fan of video pinball i don't know what it is you would think those two things wouldn't mix at all but video pinball is just so fun especially if they get the physics correctly within the program now you'll notice this this cartridge isn't as drab as the older ones uh, when the XEGS came out they repackaged a lot of the games uh, to look a little more hip to sell them a little bit better you know I mean, how many times can you sell asteroids well if it looks hip maybe it'll sell more but long story short some games were developed at that time and some were repackaged 
I'm hoping this is a repackaging so it will actually work in the 800 because some of the games that were developed at the time are not backwards compatible with the 800. So I'm hoping this is an older title that just got a, a fancy new look. Gorf! Gorf is such a fun game no matter where you play it. Um, it's like one of those games where the developers are like, all right, let's come up with a game. Well, we can always rip this game off. And the next guy's like, well, we can rip this game off too. And they couldn't figure out which game to rip off. So they ripped them all off and put it into one game. Such a fantastic game. Different screens. Uh, keeps, you, keeps you engaged at all times. When I first got this cartridge, people were telling me something about it will only work in the 800, not the 400. Or maybe it'll work in the 800 and better because of some doohickey that the, the system has. I don't know, but people were saying that this cartridge is kind of kind of finicky uh, to play in systems, whereas most people played it on floppy. I don't know. I have the cartridge, I have the system, we'll figure out what the dealio with that is, as far as it concerns for me, anyhow. Basic computing language. Um, what a big computer would be complete without its basic you know well it likes you know pumpkin spice too so you know, moving on yeah i never got into basic too much as a, as a as a kid um i couldn't be bothered with all that typing and i don't think i would be bothered with it today maybe maybe i will maybe my 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 palette has changed i though at the time would rather just plug a, a cartridge in and get rock and rolling on a game Atlantis, popular title from a Magic uh, on most systems. Uh, strangely enough, I haven't, I don't have a lot of experience with it. Um, I can't recall why. I don't remember not liking it. I don't remember liking it. So maybe it's just one of those titles that just kind of gets passed over in my brain. Demon Attack. This seems to be like, you know, Brian Mancave, his world is all about Donkey Kong. My world seems to be all about Demon Attack. I guess I am basing my system's capability based on Demon Attack, and yet anything hasn't compared to my Atari 2600 version of Demon Attack, in my personal opinion. Now, you may like the Intellivision one better, and we can go back and forth on that all day long, but as it stands, I'm not saying one's better, I'm just saying I enjoy one better. So please understand that difference. And I can't wait to try this. We just tried the uh, TI-99 port, and I was very disappointed. Um, hopefully this will be a little bit better. And last but not least, talking about Donkey Kong, here's, um, well, it's Donkey Kong. Oddly enough, I already had this cartridge. And I think it was last Christmas, some lady was talking about the game and how her and her brother used to, you know, play it together. It's just one of those memories that were, you know, a good memory for her and her brother. And I was like, yeah, I got a couple copies of that. She's like, oh my God, do you have it for the 8-bit computer systems? I said, yeah, actually, it's the only cartridge I do have. And she's like, oh, I'd love to give that to him for, 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 for Christmas. Just to, you know, so we can go back and reminisce. And I ended up hooking her up with it because I didn't have a system. But luckily for me, I have Donkey Kong back in my possession. And this is, in my opinion, one of the best ports of Donkey Kong you can get for a home system. And of course, ironically enough, all of these cartridges came courtesy of Willie from Arcade USA. These two came in separate packages some time ago. And uh, these four recently in a package that you should have already seen me open up. And if not, seek it out. It's not too far back. So it's time to get this thing hooked up. And hooking it up to the TV is, is no different than any other system that you used to. You got a little cord here that's going to go into the coaxial area. You can either use one of those stupid boxes or, of course, get yourself one of these, which is a male coax to female RCA. Bippity bam, you're good to go. But before we do that, we gotta see if the thing even works. Now, I haven't even fired this thing up yet. I literally just plugged the cord into the side of the machine and into the wall, and I have no idea if this power supply is even gonna work. You're gonna find out live with me. We got a nice little switchy switchy over here. I believe that's supposed to be a light, right? It's a light. So let's see if we, uh, if we can light up my life. Okay, cool. So we have a light, something clicked inside here. Let me get this into the TV, and we'll figure out this thing even works. So now that we know we have power, I've hooked up the computer to the TV. It's on channel three, and there's a switch on the side for channel two and three, which I have it on two. I'm gonna power up and see what happens without a cartridge or anything. We don't even have basic in there yet, so. Okay, so there is something, it's a, it's a memo pad. So let's, um, let's do this. 
Yippee! All right, so we have the system with power. We have a video signal. What's left to do? Oh yeah, let's play the game. So this will take your standard Atari joystick and we'll just slippity slide this in just like that. Make sure it's in there. Ooh, that feels loose. That feels loose. We might have to open this up and check it out. But until then, get our game cartridge, pop it in there, close your system because it will not power on unless you do that, and bam! Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong, we're going to play Donkey Kong. This one seems harder than normal. Get up there, get up there Mario, jump over the stuffs. Oh no, your head Mario. Your head, oh no, don't get dead.